Well, in our first story, the governing New Patriotic Party over the weekend elected Dr. Mahmoud Bamia as its flag bearer ahead of the 2024 general elections in what many described as a showdown uh, between Dr. Bamia and Kennedy Japan. The vice president polled 61.74% of total votes cast. Now, Dr. Bamia becomes the first party member of the North Instruction, uh, specifically the Northeast region, and a Muslim to lead the MPP. A feeds the party's says, nullifies public perception that the MPP is an Akan party. The vice president will face off with former president John Dramani Mahama of the NDC, who also hails from northern Ghana in the 2024 general elections. Given his victory speech, Dr. Bami invited the youth of the party to unite behind him to break the eight in the polls. I am determined to work with all of them and all our supporters to achieve the party's ambition of breaking the eight. There are those who would say that we are divided as a party, but I am here to tell them that it couldn't be less true. The MPP is a thriving democracy where leaders are elected, not anointed. And I salute my fellow competitors in this race for partaking in this crucial process. While our plans may differ at times, our visions are aligned. We share a passion for Ghana and a firm conviction that the MPP is the only party that can transform Ghana. My vision is to build an inclusive, food self-sufficient, data-driven and systems-based nation that will fully participate in the global digital revolution to resolve our problems and also to usher in a golden age of benefits from our natural resources. When we bring the talents of the youth together, we will surely build a mighty nation. Together, we can transform this nation and do even more in many areas. I therefore invite the youth, particularly the Gen Zs, to join me in this journey of great possibilities. Or well, the largest opposition party in Ghana, the National Democratic Congress, says it sees no need in congratulating Dr. Bamia for being elected the flag bearer of the governing New Patriotic Party. Now, Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Mustafa Bandi, tells TV3 Dr. Bamia is just a uh, continuation of what he describes as a failure of the current MPP government. He says that the election of Dr. Bamia gives the NDC an easy chance to win the 2024 general election elections we have a president who himself has a record to have led a peaceful united ghana we are living under a, a president who is highly divisive a president who is highly partisan a president who is nepotistic a president who believes that it is about myself and my family you have seen the ajapadia classified document in which Nanado's governance is not about the people of Ghana, but it is about, it's about his Dankwa heritage. It's a, a, a her, the heritage of, of a repenying, and that is the symbol Dr. Baumia is leading. The NDC will come to power to do what we did and better off in 2016. We are coming to restore hope for Ghanaians. We are coming to put food, first of all, on the table of Ghanaians. We are coming to give Ghanaians security and unity of our country. That is what the NDC will do. We will go to an election. Ghanaians will have to decide the hardship versus a new government. Okay. Ghanaians will have to decide corruption versus a new government. Ghanaians will have to choose nepotism versus a new government of hope. Mm. That is what 2024 will be about. Clearly, when Nanadu says, I will do everything in my power, to make sure Baumia gets a president. What it means is trying to rig election. 
Well, meanwhile, the executive director of Global Info Analytics, Musa Dankwa, says the 61.4% vote win by Dr. Baumia is appreciable. But if he fails to win by over 70% in the Ashanti region, which is the stronghold of the NPP, then the party will lose the 2024 general election. He outlines what the present needs of Ghanaians are ahead of the 2024 elections. The grassroots are not happy in the Shanti region. And we have yeah. seen that in the general poll of all Ghanaians. To the extent that um, MPP is not within 50% of the region as we speak right now. So they have to double their effort in the region. Because if they perform below 75% in yeah. that region, the race for them will be over in 2024. The priority for, for the nation is economy. Then you have jobs. Then you have education. Then we have corruption number four. So for any party who stands a chance of winning the election in 2024 must give credible solutions to these four critical areas of, 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 of the economy mm. and assure voters that they have the panacea to address those issues. Anything less than this will not win any vote. <laughs> While well, still in politics, the national chairman of the main opposition National Democratic Congress, Johnson Asedi Nkitia, says the party invested in the future while it was in power, unlike the current new patriotic party government, which he says has borrowed without much to show for it. Now, speaking on hot issues with Kemni Amano, the NDC chair said that the next NDC government under John Dramani Mahama would continue with policies and projects to lead the country into a brighter future. In our case, the hardship could be explained by our choice, deliberate choice, in investing in the future. In this particular case, we are not investing in, in the future, and we still have hardship because of the greed of people in government. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, heads we lose, tails we lose. Mm -hmm. We are not enjoying today, and the future even looks uh, more bleak. Than, than what we have. The future of the youth is destroyed. We've mortgaged the, the future of uh, the younger ones by excessive borrowing. Mm. So the next generation are looking at no opportunities, but coming to face even worse hardship than we are facing. L now. Let's look that at is why they want a change to uh, somebody who will lead the country. And even if we have to tighten our belts now, we are building a better future for, for the, our younger generation. The liberate black painting of President John Dramani Mahamatu has been exposed with the passage of time. We admitted the hardships at that time, but we said that the hardships are uh, being brought about because of our investment into the future. Mm -hmm. And that, if we tighten our belts now, our, the next generation will be better off. Mm. And we never blamed anybody for what was happening. We took responsibility for what was happening. And now you said, no, everything bad was caused by Mahama. You now change over to your saint. And now he comes and never takes responsibility for anything. Anything that has happened in this country was caused by somebody else. So apart take, from take, taking responsibility is the difference. You take responsibility. And then you point to the people that, look, what I'm doing now is going to bear these fruits if we follow this trajectory. You cannot run a country like it's being done now without a significant portion of your resources going into investment into the future. Well, still on this issue, the national chairman of the National Democratic Congress says the ideal number of MPs Ghana needs should be 200. He told Hot Issues host Kemi Amano that looking at the population size compared to other countries, the current 275 members of parliament is a large number. Ghana will from January 7, 2025 have 276 MPs after the Electoral Commission last month laid a constitutional instrument before parliament for the creation of the Guan constituency in the OT region. If I had my way. I would have preferred Ghana running with the mm. 200 MPs that we projected when we were writing the constitution. Mm. Unfortunately, there was a, a loophole in the constitution that was exploited by President Kufour's government, which was condoned by the then judiciary. 
And that mm. is where we are now. We have opened the floodgates for anybody to create any number of constituencies mm. so long as they find themselves in government. Because if you look at the clause that allows for the creation of constituencies, it states explicitly that constituencies, uh, boundaries can be revised after population census. You understand? Mm. The revision does not necessarily imply creating more constituencies. We are talking about shift in populations within the 10 years and so on that may make one constituency excessively large as against the other constituencies that are depopulated and so on. Right. So that was the thinking of the consultative assembly uh, as at that time we were putting it there. So nobody anticipated that we'll be having uh, close to two, three hundred MPs as at this stage. Mm. But then we also put in another uh, clause that required that if a government, in order to prevent gerrymandering, if a government wants to create constituencies, those constituencies cannot be used for the elections ahead. So that if you create, you propose constituencies, those proposed constituencies must form part of your manifesto getting into the, the election. So if you are defeated, those constituencies will not be created. I see. And, but when President Kufo came and he created uh, uh, some constituencies, the matter was sent to court. In fact, the national chairman of MPP, President Kufo's party at that time, spoke against it and said that, look, this one, we cannot create these constituencies and use them in the 2004 elections. So if we create them, if, if we want to create them now, we propose them. So it is only after 2004 that they can be used in the election. But the Supreme Court, instead of going into the merits of the case, they ruled based on the procedural issue, and then they, they never went into that thing. I so see. President Kufo was able to use those constituencies created that year and went into election with it. And that opened the floodgates. Now away from politics, the electricity company of Ghana will effective this morning begin an exercise dubbed Operation Fix the Bill and Pay the Bill in its operational areas. Now according to the company, the exercise is aimed at capturing the consumption readings of its postpaid customers to enable the company produce actual bills and ensure that it verifies the integrity of meter readings. It is also aimed at building confidence in the bills it delivers to customers as well as collect arrears owed by customers. The ECG says due to the exercise, the regional and district offices will operate with a lean staff pool who will provide essential services to customers during this exercise to enable total participation by top management and staff. This is yet another policy strategy the power distributor is rolling out to improve on its services and also increase its revenue collection. Now, the Water Research Institute of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is advocating for thorough research into the siting of landfill sites in the country. Now, according to the industrial research body, leaches from dam sites and chemicals filter gradually through the earth's surface to contact underground water systems. We'll bring you details of that story in a subsequent bulletin. But moving on, the spillage of the Akosombo Dam impacted the lives and livelihoods of thousands of people in the lower Volta Basin. Pregnant women were forced to travel long distances by boat for antenatal care due to the spillage. Godwin Asidiba, who first reported on the applied, revisited the area as Media General's Three Foundation made the donation to the pregnant woman. Embarking on a two-hour journey from the bustling capital Accra, it's been two weeks since my last visit to Afidopo, where pregnant women seek refuge in the aftermath of their homes being submerged. The haunting memory of her plight, pregnant and abandoned by her husband, with five children to care for, lingered in my mind even as I departed for Accra the last time, contemplating ways to elevate her burden became a persistent thought. Agnes Bedi, when I arrived at her home, 
greeted me with more than just excitement. In the heart of the Volta region where the spillage has cast a shadow of adversity, the challenges faced by pregnant women resonate deeply. I'm here through Media General's Three Foundation to donate these relief items um, to Vida, Agnes and Naomi, mothers-to-be, whose journey for antenatal care echoes the struggles of many here in the Volta region after the spillage of the Akosombo and Pung Dam. <laughs> My children and I rely on our neighbors for food and help. I really appreciate these items brought to us. Naomi, whom I joined on the journey with Agnes during my last visit, is now in labor and has been urgently taken to the hospital. One question lingers in my mind. How did she manage the journey there? Alongside her husband, Sifas Asunda, who had to board a canoe to reach the nearest major hospital, the primary destination for pregnant women to deliver and access general health care in the community. The lack of life jackets made the journey both tedious and nerve wracking Successfully navigating the largest river in the area, our journey persists. Now on a motor tricycle, the same laborious routine is endured by women in labor, highlighting the challenges they face in accessing essential health care. The moment has arrived, and Sefas is beaming with excitement and smiles. He cannot wait to hold his newborn child in his arms. Nail. <laughs> Naomi recounts her challenging journey to the hospital, emphasizing that it was far from easy. I struggled when I was in labor. There were no means, so I had to walk past the first river. Later, I found a boat on the second river. Despite the challenges, Naomi finds excitement in the items brought to her through the Three Foundation. I'm very, very excited because not everybody can really do this. So I'm really happy about what you guys are doing. As the time to return approached, my mind was filled with apprehension about the impending daunting journey. Boarding the canoe. I found solace in saying a prayer for our safe passage. Sifa Sumbele reveals that individuals traveling from Afidopo and neighboring communities sometimes lose their lives during this perilous journey. This is how we suffered every day, every blessed day. When we got sick, we are not feeling well, we need to go to the hospital. This is what we normally pass through. Sometimes people used to die. Because of the time they were supposed to reach the hospital, they did not get them on time. It affected them. Returning to Afidopo, that's good news. Vidalogy has safely delivered and returned a week ago. Baby, I bought no free bands and I'm a better one soon. So, bought no my nanti alcohol, bought no into me by. It was raining when I was in labor. I walked to the riverside, but there was no boat to take me across. Luckily, I met some boys who assisted me. When I finally crossed, there was no vehicle to take me to the hospital. Sustainable Development Goal 3, SDG 3, aims to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Health and well-being are important at every stage of one's life, starting from the beginning. This goal addresses all major health priorities, reproductive, maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health, communicable and non-communicable diseases, universal health coverage and access for all to save, effective, quality and affordable medicines and vaccines. While all countries have committed to achieving this goal by 2030, the implementation is lacking here until the government extends aid to communities in desperate need of health centers such as Afidopo, Achikope and Akpokope, many lives 
will remain at risk. Godwin Asidiba, TV3. And that's our wrap of the 6 a.m. news here on TV3. My name is Judith Brown. We'll go for a short break. Back with the rest of New Day.